Heat Shock Protein 90 is a family of uh, chaperones which help in the folding of critical uh, proteins which are involved in cancer. And a lot of the client proteins of HSP90 actually are drivers of cancer. And that's why I think it, is, it should be targeted for cancer treatment. The HSP90 is actually ubiquitously expressed across all uh, normal and cancerous cells. However, the differentiation is the fact that client proteins of HSP90 are drivers, so we can target cancers which actually have these mutant or overexpressed driver proteins. We've been working on HSP90 inhibitors for approximately 15 years and in the early days everyone said that these drugs will be too toxic because they are ubiquitously expressed. HSP90 is ubiquitously expressed across all cell types. However, we have shown that there is a therapeutic index over this and we've done multiple phase one studies of chemically different HSP90 inhibitors. I think these are very usable uh, and most of the drugs are intravenous and there are some drugs which are being currently developed which are oral. Uh, they can be given intravenously, usually weekly and over time now we're using them in combination with other targeted agents. Heat shock protein 90 inhibitors have some toxicities which are across all chemical classes and mainly gut toxicity but given once a week it is very manageable. There are some more specific toxicities like eye toxicity which is also reversible uh, and it's a matter of keeping an eye on them and it is possible to dose these uh, weekly in patients. I think uh, they are very different from chemotherapeutic agents. They don't have marrow toxicity. However, they do have uh, toxicities that can be related specifically to HSP90, like gut toxicity. We did start off across a wide range of cancers uh, as single agents, and there is some hints of activity, uh, such as HER2 amplified breast cancer or EGFR mutant lung cancer. But given the therapeutic landscape with multiple different inhibitors, I think they're going to be best used in combination. Yes, so they could be, for example, ALK rearranged lung cancers or EGFR mutant lung cancers in combination with ALK and EGFR inhibitors, but also HER2 amplified breast cancer in combination with either trastuzumab or the TKIs. I think the most advanced trials are in phase three. Uh, they are combined with chemotherapy and out some of those aren't available yet, but I think the real push forward should be with other targeted agents. Uh, I think yes, so in ALK rearranged cancers we should use them with ALK inhibitors or in EGFR mutant uh, lung cancers we should use them in combination with other EGFR inhibitors and possibly in HER2 amplified breast cancer with other HER2 targeted agents. I think there are some new areas of HSP90 biology which seem to suggest that HSP90 inhibitors uh, reduce the rate of uh, resistant clones emerging and have an influence on cancer evolution. And I think these will help use these inhibitors early on in combination rather than in very late relapse disease.